Hello, this is Randy Swatty, ecologist with the Nature Conservancy's Land Fire Team. Today I want to explore Land Fire's existing vegetation type data set, which is one of many, one that's probably one of the most used and a very important data set for landscape scale assessments and other research. So we're going to start at landfire.gov. So if you go to this website, you can learn tons about the Land Fire program. And then if you want to learn more about the data sets we're talking about in these videos, you can, for example, go to the Vegetation button. Then hit Existing Vegetation Type. Here you'll learn that the EVT layer represents the species composition currently present at a given site. The data is delivered as a 30 meter raster and it's based on NatureServe's Ecological Systems classification. On this website, you can also download the metadata, and if you're not going to get into the whole GIS part of it, you can just download some maps that are already made by the Land Fire team. All right, so with that, we're going to explore Ohio. Here you see ArcMap as it loads the Ohio data. I'll drag it over into view. I thought we'd explore Ohio because it represents a great mosaic of natural and unnatural ecosystems, which is what the existing vegetation type data represents. First, let's open up the attribute table. Dragging it into view, you'll see several attributes, and I'll scroll over and show you some of those. First, you'll see the count. Um, which represents the number of 30 meter pixels labeled as any particular existing vegetation type name or other classification. If you were to make a map based on the EVT underscore name attribute, you would have roughly 90 categories in your map legend. While this may be great for some work, especially for research or modeling, you may want to have a simplified legend. One way to do that would be to build your legend based on, excuse me, the Society of American Foresters Society for Range Management legend. I was counting this up and it looks like there are roughly 34 types mapped under this classification. So Landfire crosswalks the existing vegetation type name to these other classifications. If you wanted to do really course level work, um, you may go to the system group attribute and where you can just map simple types such as riparian or hardwood. A lot of times people will be doing research where they need to limit their analysis to just forested areas and this data set would be one way to do that. It's amazing. Tons of information here and it's wall to wall making it really useful for several types of work. One thing I would like to do is make this map a little more presentable for you and explore what the data really looks like. So I'm going to go and basically map based on that SAF underscore SRM legend. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the agriculture sort of a, a light color. And where it says no dominant life form, I know that happens to be urban, so I'm going to make that gray. I'll hit apply. It'll draw, and then we can check it out. And as we all know, a fair bit of Ohio would be in the agricultural and urban land uses. However, if we were to zoom in a little bit to the lower quarter of the state, we start to see other vegetation types dominate and I will just poke around a little bit and see what that's like. So this purple, we find the um, South Central Interior Mesophytic Forest. Maybe if we click over here, we'll get more ag. And here's some herbaceous grassland or close, close grown crop type. So that is ag. One thing I noticed was this orange veg over here, which is um, North Interior Beach Maple Forest, it appears. So the Landfire data is designed for large-scale work. 
Occasionally, you may want to zoom in just to explore and learn a little bit more about the data. I'll do that here. However, this is not an endorsement of doing this at, for your analyses. This is just for exploration and kind of for fun. So let's see. We zoom in and we see sort of the nature of the pixels, right? Landfire was definitely not developed for this sort of use, but again, I like to zoom in and, and check things out and learn about the strengths and weaknesses of the data set, which you should do with any data set you use. So that's a quick exploration of the existing vegetation type data set. I'm going to zoom back out to Ohio, take a quick look, and then I'm going to show you some of the kind of more interesting uses I found recently for landfire data. So what I did is I just simply went to Google Scholar, I typed in land fire, then existing vegetation type in quotes. Then, because I wanted to show you some of the most recent papers, clicked the since 2014, and I pulled up a few that I wanted to show you because they're just um, great background papers for you if you decide to use this data set. For example, a great starter paper for anyone wanting to learn more about land fire is the Rollins 2009 data set destined to become a citation classic in the land fire literature. A really great paper that gives you an overview of the methods used to develop land fire data. I thought this paper was particularly interesting partly because of the charismatic megafauna or sort of medium fauna, mesofauna, the fisher. What these folks did is they used climate, topography, and vegetation data sets to look at the distri distribution of the fissure in the U.S. Rocky Mountains. For the vegetation data, they used land fire existing vegetation type, among others, to sort of develop a rule set for where they might find the fissure. In this paper, the authors explore the various um, components that might predict burn severity in central Idaho. Here again, they use the land fire data sets for the vegetation component of their work. They combine it with other data sets to explore their question of, you know, is it vegetation, topography, or weather that, that has the greatest impact on burn severity in this area? Then another use um, was by these researchers where they were looking at mountain pine beetle and they did sort of as I suggested earlier where they used land fire data to constrain their analysis so they weren't concerned with herbaceous vegetation they were wanted to look only at forested vegetation so they used land fire data to sort of winnow out the, the forested pixels to do their analysis on so I strongly encourage you to check out these and other papers to learn more about the specifics of land fire data use and how people are being creative and doing some great GIS work and other sorts of things to get at their questions and issues out on the landscape. So with that, I'll leave you with the landfire.gov webpage and hope that you'll come back in the future and check out more of our videos or contact us at landfire at tnc.org. Again, that's landfire at tnc.org. If you do that, you'll be put in touch with the Landfire, the Nature Conservancy's Landfire team, and we just we stand ready to help you in the appropriate use of Landfire data. Thank you.